Hi, I'm Luke Jones. Welcome to another edition of The Other Way. Here to show you a little bit more about what I consider to be my Moscow. And we start with quite a poignant place, the Hotel Cosmos. You might be wondering why. Well, when I first came to Moscow almost 30 years ago, this was the first place I stayed. It was the communist's idea of a five-star hotel. It was uh, interesting, so to speak. Don't worry, we won't be taking you inside. We don't want you to be eaten alive, but uh, just look at the size of this beast from the outside. Here we are in Cosmonaut Ali, here in Vodenkha in northern Moscow. Now, the statue here of Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, he was the guy who worked out how you could actually send a rocket into space. Now, he died before any rockets actually went into space, but let's not get too technical. Still an amazing achievement. And I've even been to his birthplace in Borovsk, just outside Moscow. Just thought I'd add that. Anyway, many people, especially Americans, tell me how little they learned about the Soviet side of the space race. Everybody obviously was taught that Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon back in 1969. But then they were taught that Alan Shepard was the first American in space and conveniently missed out that it was actually Yuri Gagarin who was the first man in space. Come up to Vedenkha and you'll see for yourself what the Soviets managed to achieve during that time. Let's go. <laughs> This place is known as Vedenkha, which is an acronym for the exhibition of the achievements of the Soviet people. Now, as you can see, these dudes have managed to uh, reap a few uh, sheaths of corn and they're telling you all about it. But once you actually go inside, you'll see everything that the all 15 republics managed to achieve. Nowadays, honestly, it's just a place to go out for a Sunday afternoon walk in the boiling heat. Let's check it out. Say what you like about the Soviet Union, it certainly had its faults and plenty of them, but on the one hand, you can't criticize them for not trying with the architecture. There's some pretty impressive buildings. And then if we look around here, same thing over here. No capitalist country would ever build anything like this. Moscow has undergone a massive makeover in the last few years, and no more so than with public transport. Just look at these beautiful trams, you know, plying their trade, taking you from one end of the city to the other, and all for less than a dollar. Great value. Let's jump aboard. Time to buy a ticket on the Metro. This ticket office is actually located outside. Great, because it's a sunny day. Anyway, let's top up the card. Здравствуйте. Поставьте, пожалуйста, 200 рублей. Спасибо. По карте, пожалуйста. Oh, okay. It's about half a euro a ride. Bargain. No zones. Travel as far as you like. Спасибо вам. Хорошего дня. We're now in Victory Park, or Park Pabierdi in Russian, which is one of the many memorials to the Second World War here in Moscow. And it's also a fantastic example of the regeneration that the city has undergone in the last few years. This wasn't here when I first arrived in the 90s. Let's have a look around. This is Moscow State University, or MGU as it's better known to Russians. It's where I spent four months studying Russian back in the autumn of 1993. Covered in snow everywhere, here we were thrown into the uh, new Russia uh, and basically told, learn Russian. And I have to say it was a bit of a baptism of fire, but it did us good and I have to say it was a fantastic place to be. But it was always where the Russian, the Soviet elite strove to graduate from as it put you in good hands for the future. Russia is very much a country of contrasts. I mean, it's hard to find 
a place in the world with more illusions about it than here in Moscow. Some guidebooks say there are people who love Moscow, there are people who hate Moscow, and most people actually do both. Well, personally, I love living here. I couldn't think of anywhere else that I'd rather live. And I'm delighted that you've taken the time to be with me to have a look at what Moscow has to offer and see that we can dispel the myths and stereotypes. The usual one is, oh, it's cold all year round. Well, look at my face from being out in the sun today. It's pretty hot. Then look at the fact that, oh, it's dangerous. Well, we haven't seen any tanks going down the streets. No one's shooting. Actually, it's pretty safe and probably safer than wherever you come from. So uh, do yourselves a favor and come and visit. This is the famous Luzhniki Stadium. It used to be called the Central Stadium in the name of Lenin, and it was built specifically for the 1980 Olympic Games. It was very much the showpiece of those games. Now it's a totally revamped sports stadium. It's where they had the opening of the World Cup and the finals, and also the semi-finals where, unfortunately, uh, England came second. At least I was there to see it. And it's a fantastic stadium, holds nearly 80,000 people, and what a great view from up here. Moscow now has its very own cable car, taking you across the Moscow River from up here on Sparrow Hills down to the Luzhniki Stadium. And if you look over there, over on the right, that bizarre looking building with the copper color roof is actually the Academy of Sciences. And I've even had dinner up on the rooftop restaurant with fantastic views across the city. So things that you didn't even know existed just around the corner from you, they're all here. This part of Moscow is known as Patriarch Ponds. It's a bit of a misnomer because there's actually only one pond. Not sure what happened to the other ones, but anyway. It's in downtown Moscow. It's where people like to come and hang out, daytime and evening. We're going to show you around. You won't be disappointed. One of the many reasons that Patriarch Ponds is famous is because here, the novel Master and Margarita, written by Bulgakov, is set. So many people come here to uh, savor the moment. I haven't actually read it myself personally, maybe I'll get around to it one day, but on the subject of books, I actually wrote one myself, titled Why Russians Don't Smile. And it's a myth buster for foreigners telling you what Russia's really like. Okay, so it dispels all the stereotypes that you might have had from watching TV, reading the Western media, all the bad things about Russia, which aren't true. So just before we finish, we're going to go for one final walk this evening down one of the nicer streets of Moscow. You won't be disappointed. Let's go. Right, this is Malaya Bronna Street, one of the chicest places in town. I'm a little bit out of place here, a little bit underdressed, but I'm sure people around me will more than make up for this. So, here we are in the best bar in town, Susol. Lovely Belgian spot for a nice pilsner. This brings us to the end of our second episode today. Whatever you do when you come to Russia, don't say Nazdaroye, stick to cheers. Really hope you've enjoyed watching. If you liked it, please press like, share, comment, spread the word. Russia's the place to be, particularly here in Moscow. I'm Luke Jones, this is The Other Way. Thank you.